my name is Ramsey. Welcome back to Slay the Spire. The mod list at the moment is the Guardian and the Infinite Spire. Uh, we'll see what we get as options here. Take a red rare card, 8 max HP, 16 max HP. I'm still thinking random boss relic there. Sozu, sure. More than happy to have it. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, let's have a look at what paths we're probably going to want. Probably going to want a three elite path. We already start with an extra energy. Now, in the early game, at least until I add a couple cards, everything is going to be pretty much obvious. So I'm not really going to talk through each of those moves. Do I take the Stasis Strike? If I take Stasis Strike, then eventually I can start taking, like, Stasis Shots and Stasis Shields. Sure. Alright, Gremlin. Armored Protocol. Gain four block at the end of each turn while in defensive mode. Gain two defensive mode. Okay, we didn't pair that. Pacifists. While in hand, you cannot play attacks, but there's also a blind there. Onyx, I want to pair. Good. Blind, I want to pair. Good. Pacifist, I don't. Oh, hang on. Vent Steam. When I was hovering over that card, it showed me that it had two sockets, I think. Right? I think it was. Hmm. Onyx does nothing for me right now. I don't have any temporary gains or losses or anything like that. So. Hold off on that for the moment. Right. Refracted Beam. Do I want to do it? It's been offered to me really, really early. And I am on a line that has a fair few upgrades. Yeah, I'm taking it can be upgraded any number of times, and it hits once more every time it's upgraded. With the extra energy from Sozu, it's much easier to play than it otherwise might be as well. And I can use Onyx in my deck to help me gain temporary HP. Wow, this is awful. One damage from the kill. Temporary HP? Sorry, not temporary HP. I can use it to gain momentary strength and keep the momentary strength. Prismatic Beam. I do need something to put gems in. And it's another Beam card, so Beam synergies are on the table at that point. Okay. Get it! <laughs> Hit me at your own doom. Gonna make sure that target's dead forever. A few targets on the board, the far better for me. I'm also really glad that I don't have the Velvet Choker now because previously the build just tended towards something that didn't want Velvet Choker and made it a bit difficult on me over time. Orb Walk. Yes, I'll take that. Gaining two strength is really good when I'm gonna hit for multiple times constantly. Could have used one more attack there. Maybe an orb walk. Ouch. All right, we got most of our attacks and orb walk in the same hand. That's pretty bad. More bank, whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No longer works when spending the gold at the shop. Temporal strike, I mean, we don't actually have much stasis outside of stasis strike and orb walk right now. we we'll still take temporal strike. I don't think I do at this point. Ruby. Probably take a ruby there. So we'll immediately socket the ruby into... I mean, if I put the stasis strike... Hang on. Okay, yeah. No, Ruby goes in Prismatic Beam. Uh, the Stasis Strike needs to take the Onyx so that I can get one artifact every two turns. That's really powerful. Uh, then we upgrade the Refracted Beam, and I'm afraid to say that we will almost always be upgrading exclusively the Refracted Beam. Refracted Beam. Refracted Beam. Ryan, you can pronounce words if you really try. I believe in you. Uh, drop another defense. Full defend this turn. Hell yes. Good curl. I kind of want to all walk refracted being the front line. 
Yeah, I'm doing it. It's not like I can defend for too much here anyway. And it sets up the ability to kill the front line with thorns or with just a single hit. I know I have a single hit this turn because I had Sacer Strike. A lot of damage here. Starting to get a significantly less comfortable with it. Obviously, should have defended first. Defended, sorry, attacked first though. My bad. I need to not neglect defense in this deck because that's the way that we definitely lose. Lucky Rock, each time you play an attack, you have a 5% chance of getting critical. Critical, the next attack you play, it'll double damage. Priming beam. Increase the damage dealt by beams by one this combat. Yes. We're not going to have many opportunities to upgrade that, but we should always do the math as to whether or not that's actually more efficient. All paint upgrades, curl up and defend. Yeah. Okay, so this does 20 damage right now. Uh, if I upgrade it, it does four more damage. If I upgrade priming beam at this point. What? Priming Beam doesn't upgrade Beam cards by more when you upgrade it. All right, never mind. I never upgrade Priming Beam. It's always Refractive Beam. I can't take the I can't take the the regret. It will kill me. But this heal will save me against this elite. So happy to. Empowering Shard for each act you climb, gain one strength at the start of combat. Hell yes! I already have one from it, and it only gets better from here. I've got to remember, almost always, the last attack I'm going to want to play in my hand is... Yeah. Uh, almost always, the last attack I'm going to want to play in my hand is Refracted. Just because I want to leave myself with the ability to get crit up. Turn up, you can no longer become frail, as well as just a bunch of stuff I'm not going to take there. Good shop, though. Or rather, a lot of money going to the shop. Uh, Flash of Steels? It's just some free damage. Uh, Leadlined. That's not Leadline Bottle. That's Bottled Mercury. A bomb pickup, choose a card. When it's played, if it's an attack, gain one strength. If it's a skill, gain one dex. If it's power, gain two focus. I can put that on Prismatic Beam, but maybe I put it on Stasis Strike because I play Stasis Strike every second turn. Yeah, I put it on Stasis Strike. That's really good. Oh, that's so good. Woo! I probably take Primer Beam and then remove a card from the deck. All right, I, I am actually very excited by that. Refracted Beam needs the upgrade again, obviously. Seven by three is the opener. Seven by six, sorry, for the opener for uh, 42 damage. Pretty powerful. I did not even need to split the enemy there. That... Probably shouldn't have, actually. Come to think of it. Thanks for trying to make me frail, dude. And then I'm just going to blind the one that hasn't attacked recently and that I'm not setting up to stun. Stasis, double attack you, and then just double defend, wait. Okay, so I don't have anything like Guardian Coil or anything, so I might want a multi-beam in this deck, literally just so that I have access to some AoE. Just because this is clearly pretty short on that. Good kill, though. Okay, that was a flawless boss, so I get the Dead Branch, hell yeah, which just said that it completed a quest for me, but it didn't. Flawless, another boss. Magic Blast can incinerate. Right. Uh, fast forward, Hyper Beam, and Construction Form. Probably none of these. Hmm. Retaining cards in hand is... Eh, it's whatever. Like, 
It just helps me hold defensive cards in hand for a while longer if I want to use them. I don't have many things here that exhaust. Like, the only thing that exhausts is the Stasis Strike if I let it exhaust and debuff uh, and Orb Walk if I actually Stasis it. So, Dead Branch is not going to be impactful right now. I could go Runic Dome. The extra energy is important, is the thing. And I do want to continue picking up relics. Yeah, I'm going to go Runic Dome. I don't think this deck changes how it plays often based on the enemies. Uh, outgoing Conditional. That said, Nightmares will just kill me. I need to keep that in mind, right? This is similar in that it's like a bunch of hits. So Nightmare will be similarly bad for me. Similarly nightmarish as it was uh, at the very, very... End of last run. Sorry for the mild spoiler if you haven't seen that. Right. The enemy is attacking for 6x2 on the first turn here, so... We'll be defended. Oh, it's 5x2, right. It's 6x2 in higher ascension. Let's fall walk. The enemy's debuffing me this turn, so I know that I just go aggressive. Gotta remember not to play Stasis Strike if I don't need to, because the Onyx in it will actually lose 1 HP from me. I can have a secondary Stasis Strike, but... Should we say card? When it is played, not when any copy of that card is played. So second Stasis Strike doesn't really do too much for me, except for clog up my first time I draw it. Take the Ruby there. Yeah! Got those potions! Hell yeah! Now, unfortunately, these enemies could be buffing on turn one, or they could be uh, attacking for one by five. So I'll prioritize my defense here, just because I don't know what's going to happen. Buffing, attacking, attacking, sweet! Basically the best way that could have worked out for us. Especially now... Considering I'm going to use a refracted beam to put the bird on the ground. Great. Right, so we use a priming beam here. The backliner has been attacking two turns in a row, which means it's almost certainly not going to this turn. That's not guaranteed, but it's pretty unlikely that it attacks this turn. If it does attack, hopefully it doesn't multi-attack. Yeah, no, it buffed. Still happy I made the safe play there, though. Alright. Nope, none of those are good enough for this deck. Or rather, none of those really fit the style of this deck so far. Zico Mining Pick. Um... Sack of gems. Five random gems. No, still not for this. Uh, basically, I'm just looking for things that defend me or allow me to upgrade. That's no, not really happening right now. Um, I still have a couple of sockets. None of these are like setup sockets though, right? So I don't know if I want to put Garnet in the deck. I think I just remove a bad card. Which would definitely be a strike at this point. Ooh, thank you, Curly uh, Refracted Beam, for turning up in the first turn. It's just incredibly important that I have the ability to take down one of these targets really early. Oh, I should have played the Stasis Strike at the very end of the turn. It gives me one strength to play it. But uh, I could have gained two momentary strength and then gained the artifact from Stasis Strike. Would have been better. Just a little. So I'm not too sad that I screwed that up there. Now I just know better for the future. None of those necessary. All right, we'll enhance by putting the Ruby back into the... Prismatic Beam, that removes enough cards from the deck as well to get that upgrade. And upgrade the Refracted Beam. I'll 50-50 it. Damn. Anchors, 10 combat, uh, 10 block for the first turn of combat. 
actually really good. Considering how aggressive our deck is currently. Whew, good thing I had that there, actually. Otherwise, that was going to be a much more hellish turn. Also, having the enemy weakened is always lovely. They're doing a multi-hit this turn. They deal 12, right? Yeah. Goodbye, Book of Stabbing. Hello, Joker card. Every 15th card you play is played twice. Ah, damn it. Joker card immediately got lost. Uh, Orb Walk I can also take. It's another power just to increase my strength. With the amount of energy we have, Orb Walk is not actually that difficult to play. That's the reason I'm taking them. Uh, Lantern, study combat with additional energy. All right, our opening hand is garbage because of the riot. Unless I have Refracted Beam in my opening hand all the time, in which case it's never garbage. It's always amazing. I'm really pleased with it. All right, Sneko. Goodbye to you and hello to none of these, I don't think. It's really difficult to choose to add cards at this point. More important just to upgrade this Refracted Beam and play it commonly by having not too many cards in my deck. Hmm. I de definitely need to card remove the Writhe. There's no, no contest there. Quetstone to pump up upgrade to random attacks. You know what? Sure. Hey, it hit a refracted beam. Beautiful. That's exactly what I desperately wanted. Or it could have upgraded the attacks that I can't upgrade because I'm focusing on the refracted beam. So it's fine, basically, no matter way which uh, no matter which way it decides to approach it from. And I do double up my next attack. Oh. Good choice. Temporal Courts? I'd suck at Courts in Curl Up. Oh. And it's no deck impact until that point anyway. Just replaces itself whenever I play it. It's really important this labor in the back line goes down as quickly as possible here. Ugh, I got weakens. It's not vulnerable. Although I don't think the slaver can make me vulnerable on its first attack. So we'll Priming beam and then prismatic beam for that kill. Refracted beam for this kill. And then the midliner only attacks for seven per turn if I'm not vulnerable, and I'm not. So I only take two damage and I can start slowly whittling you down at my own rate. Double play my next card, so I do have to choose that carefully. Wow. All of that's garbage, so instead I just play a bunch of cards afterwards in order to increment the Joker card again. Sure again, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one strength. Mm, ridiculous. Uh, Taskmaster also gives us a random relic of the Light Sheen Knot. Upon pickup, lose 25% of your max HP. At the start of each combat, gain three regen. We've seen that last run. Uh, there's another Priming Beam here, or there's the Multi Beam. Deal five damage to all enemies X times. Now, the only reason I would put that in the deck is just so that I have some AoE. I feel like it's probably necessary. Okay. Uh, 40 damage on a two-cost card is pretty good, but the fact that it hits 10 times is obviously the real pull here. I don't really care about the damage ideal here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'm playing the curl up early uh, just so that I can draw an extra card. Ooh, I would have played the multi beam there, but uh, just to increment the Joker card. But I now have crit my next attack, so I'll hold off. This next attack's pretty garbage. I get to double play my next card though, which is always good. 
double play Stasis Strike, will it try and fill two slots? That would be interesting. There's a lot of stuff here that I want to double play, but I want to know how this works. Yeah, so this card doesn't know what to do. It's blinking in and out of existence. You know what? I'm just going to attack this turn. Enemy was using defensive stance, so they'll be purging this turn because they're below half HP. But I'm afraid... One... One HP left. I'm afraid they're dead shortly thereafter. So I do get both back. And I can play them. Weird. So it does duplicate the card. It just has difficulty doing it. Uh, Flawless the boss to see a random red relic. Stone calendar. The end of turn 7 deal 52 damage to all enemies. Pretty good. Citrine. Gain an energy. I usually like that, but I have a lot of energy in the moment. Whenever a targeted enemy takes damage, gain one momentary strength. That will happen multiple times over the course of my refracted beam, and that's going to be hilarious. Inability to smith cards is obviously not going to happen. Velvet Choker probably shouldn't happen. No, Velvet Choker's fine in this deck. Wild. Absolutely wild. Alright. Yeah, where are we going with this? I don't really want to start with two shops. Feels like I'm not going to have enough money to really make use of each of them. Okay, multi beam is eight to all enemies seven times. Eight by seven is 56. That's lethal. What a priming beam? I'm doing it. Blah. Uh, we'll lose the 3 max HP here. Just have to. I'm not necessarily guaranteed to even find a shop this floor, so I'll take that. All enemies are weak on turn 1. I'll take that happily, in fact. So I probably want to double up a defensive card and then play Priming Beam or something like that. So strike, double the defense. I could multi-beam here and it would... It would only deal a little bit of damage back to me. Yeah, I'm fine doing that. Enemy wasn't even attacking that turn. Beautiful. We don't even pay for it. All right, liquid bronze. Can't take it, obviously. Not taking any of those. It's basically there's no card I'm going to add to my deck at this point, save for maybe a priming beam. This enemy doesn't attack on turn one, so I don't have to worry about that. Ah, oh, I had to play the Stasis Strike at the end, right. So this turn, they're either attacking for a ridiculous amount or not much at all. So I'm going to play my Defend just in case. Hopefully they're doing... No, that's a ridiculous amount. Let's just murder you with a refractive beam doubling. Spot weakness is interesting in that in its sights you can see Donu, but because it's a debuff, it's really difficult to affect Donu with it. Weird that. Deal two damage to a random enemy five times. We actually don't have that much strength. We do have some. We don't have as enough to make polybeam like an important part of our deck. Priming Beam Stasis Strike is not enough to kill the dagger unless I play them in the opposite direction. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I want to blind the Reptomancer because I know that the dagger is not dealing damage to me this turn anyway, but the Reptomancer is going to start attacking from this turn onwards, possibly. Multi Beam, obviously, here. Let's just curl up Multi Beam, I think. Curl up Priming Beam, Priming Beam, Multi Beam. Yep, that gets me a couple prime ups there. I play more cards, so I get more defense from the defensive mode. And I also triggered the shuriken. That was definitely the correct way to go there. Nice. Enemy multi-attacks, but couldn't do anything about it. 
Uh, spot weakness is obviously incredible here. Ancient attack, that also exhausts. I do kind of want some defense this turn because I do feel like the enemy is going to attack. Invasive protocol, getting two decks while in defensive mode and then defensive mode. Alright. Oh, thank heck they weren't attacking. Okay. Well, here's our refracted beam to win. 270 damage. Wild. Or a Calcum. If you want to do a turn without block, gain 6 block as well as... Bronze Armor is nice to play at the end of a turn where I've spot, weakness, uh, spot weaknessed a target and dealt a bunch of damage to them. But the setup requires enemy doesn't have ancient... Art uh, enemy doesn't have artifact on them. I've drawn spot weakness first. I play spot weakness on them. I've had a lot of attacks on that target this turn. Then I have the ability to play Bronze Armor at the end. It has a lot of conditions on it. Makes it difficult to use. Uh, temporary Shield might be a good idea literally just to give me like a single strong block card. Nemesis could be a problem depending on when I draw the right cards. So here on the first turn, the enemy shouldn't be able to attack for 45, but they can attack for 7 by 3, reduced to 5 by 3 here. Or they could just trash my deck. Oh, 4 by 3. Right. Higher Ascension. I keep forgetting. Okay. Orb Walk, Orb Walk, Temporary Shield. Neat. Don't you 45 me. You! Of course not 45. Enemy was weakened. And also that's a higher Ascension. Damn it. I keep doing that. This is really annoying, though, that we didn't get the right card this turn. I'm going to need to double curl up next turn, definitely. Not even going to attack yet. Just in case. Definitely need to double curl up. At least that draws me an extra card. Unfortunately, now that means Refracted Beam is like another full cycle away as well. It's pretty awful. Mm hmm. Enemies intangible. Uh, enemies not intangible this turn anymore. Beautiful. So it's blind, we stasis strike first, then we priming beam, priming beam. Oh my god. Hang on. Nope. Enemy did their giant large attack and it still went through. Damn. Can't really affect this turn that much. The enemy shouldn't be able to do their large attack. Okay, good. So I do actually get to kill the Nemesis here, but I am terrified. Bad turns to draw those cards. Strawberry, racing max HP by seven as well as nothing else. Feel like I might want to dodge that elite. I can dodge it later though, so. Tori, whenever you receive five or less unblocked attack damage, reduce it by one, me. Mm. This is a problem. Gain Quantum Chamber. Quantum Chamber. Upon pickup, choose a card. Start each combat with that card removed from your deck. At the start of your fourth turn, return it and two copies of it to your hand. So that's, like, really good. That's really good for Refracted Beam, because it holds Refracted Beam out of my deck until I actually want to play it after I've buffed it a bunch. But it puts a pain in my deck. No, I, I, I do it on the refracted beam. Oh god, this combat can be really, really rough. Alright, so I can double play the first thing that I play. Probably should be curl up, but I'm thinking about old warp. Oh, it's definitely curl up. It's beam, and then beam, and then 
beam some more, gain a ridiculous amount of strength overall, and I've got crit for my next attack as well. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not too pleased about this. Place this card into stasis. Do that. Lock for a bunch. I need to be able to eventually. I think I'm dead now. I think I just killed myself. I think Gatling Beam is going to hit these enemies, and then, yeah, then there's those enemies are going to hit me back. So, unless I win this turn, I am dead. I'm dead. Ah, Gatling beam. Yeah, thorns. Thorns are the absolute worst thing for us. We probably would have been able to ace the Donu and Decker fight, like actually quite easily, uh, just because the first turns that Donu and Decker is tw uh, still trying to set up, they're not dealing that much damage. And we can get by with just the upgraded defense, the curl up, and the temporary shield. I mean, there is literally not that much defense in this deck at all, right? Uh, but we can kind of get by with that as well as the anchor. Uh, and then just nuke them with the refracted beams. I, I was very, very ready to do that. Unfortunate that it didn't get to that, but that's okay for the moment. My name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you the next time.